Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is June the 17th, 2021, and the topic tonight is connection. Um, before I talk about the, the, the topic, I would like to read out a, um, a quote this, this is from the, the Law of One, book one, and session one. And it's actually very um, at, at the beginning of, of um, this channeled book by the, the entity called Ra. And this is Ra speaking. So in truth, there is no right or wrong. There is no polarity for all will be, as you would say, reconciled at some point in your dance through the mind-body-spirit complex, which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time. This distortion is not in any case necessary. It is chosen by each of you as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thoughts which binds all things. You are not speaking of similar or somewhat like entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. You are love light, light love. You are, this is the law of one. So ever since I read this paragraph at the beginning um, of my journey through this, this series of book, they're all together five books. I've been really mulling this over in my mind. Um, a couple of points from this quote really, really, made me think first of them is that there is no right or wrong there's no polarity and at some point much further down in the evolution of our consciousness so what ra is saying that is is that there is even though right now is there seems to be right and wrong there seems to be polarity but at some point Further down the line, we will understand, we'll come to the understanding that there really is none. And so that made me think, is, is this true or not? Is it possible that there is no right or wrong? And so I start thinking about this really, really just trying to not really just to reason, but to really think about um, how I have lived and applied in when I think of right and wrong. What is it that made me feel that something is right or wrong? So in order, so what I came up with is that in order for there to be a judgment of any sort, whether there is a right or wrong, <clears throat> or any kind of comparison, is that we have to have a certain point of view. For example, is abortion right or wrong? It really depends on um, someone's point of view to think, to, to be able to formulate a, an opinion to say that abortion is right. And also the, the idea that abortion is wrong because um, it is not something that you can say it is right and that's it. There is no, as far as I know, there is no definitive way of looking at abortion. And there are a lot of things that are like that. There are a lot of, um, so, so that's why from what I can see, from what I can can deduce from my own experience is that right and wrong really depends on your point of view 
depends on your own experience, depends on how you are being socialized and educated. In some culture, it is definitely wrong, and in some culture, it's absolutely acceptable. I am not going to continue to debate this because it's not something that is definitive. All I want to say is that, as far as I'm concerned, that it is plausible that there is no right or wrong, and that in at some point in our, our understanding, in our our consciousness, at some level, that it is. Very possibly true that there is no right, no wrong, no polarity at all. And the next next um, point that that really I actually this this point is something um, that I really that really um, sticks in my mind is that is when Ra says that. We are the ones who create the distortion that we know of as polarity to amuse ourselves, and that we choose our own distortion as an alternative to understanding the unity of thoughts, which binds all things. And distortion is actually not necessary. So, when I was Really thinking about this, it 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 really hit me that we are the one that's creating our own distortion. We and that in um, in consciousness, in truly high vibrational and ultimately, at some point in time, that we. When we have resolved all our our internal conflicts or of all our distortion, um, when we truly take the time to understand the unity of all things, of of um, the unity of thought that binds all things, when we when we take the time to understand that, then we will be able to come to the conclusion that. There is only unity, and until then, until we decide to do that exercise, until we decide to take on that、um, labor of love, of really starting to understand that all polarity is really our own mind. Saying that, okay, instead of trying to understand what other people,、um, where they stand, is that we simply decide that、um, we are just going to stick to our own conclusion, stick to our own judgment. And is this true then? Because of what I'm trying to to think of is, can I? Is it possible that this is true? That we are the own, we are we are the ones that actually create our own distortion. And from my own experience,、um, I I have to say that is, I do believe that that is the case. It's very much so, because I have observed that I jump to conclusion, and create emotional and sometimes even physical dramas for myself. Rather than trying to take the time to understand why things are the way it is, and if you kind of look at society、um, as a whole, you would be able to observe that most people have opinions, and they don't really have.、Um, they have. It's it's much easier for them to give you their opinion. Without even looking at the、um, the reasons behind it, that most people do function like that. And that and and also the more when someone is in their ego, the more it, 
it is actually easier for someone to react and simply jump to conclusion. The, and for myself, I feel that when I feel disconnected and vulnerable, the easier it is for me to, to kind of take my ego's point of view. So then what is the, that my next question would be then, so what is the antidote to this self-inflicted in, uh, distortion and disconnection? Because it is really disconnecting from our true self and also disconnecting with other people. And it is really a, a symptom of disconnection that we feel this um, this propensity or this this we we feel it's easier for us to jump into conclusion to go for our ego's point of view rather than to really go and study and look at all the evidences and weigh the, the, the pros and cons on each side and then come to a conclusion as to what makes sense or not. Most of the time, at least I know myself, most of the time I don't operate from that I most of the time, um, especially in the past when I was younger, when I was definitely less experienced, that's when I actually is more simple for me to simply just jump to conclusion. So the antidote for this is really connection, connecting to our true self. And um, luckily, Ra also gave some pointers as to how we can become more disciplined in our thinking so that we can move away from distortion and move away from polarity thinking. So what Ra suggested is that the pre prerequisite is really um, silence, as in meditation. So silence is really the prerequisite because there is so many um, conversations in our mind. We are constantly bombarding ourselves, or I should say that the society we live in is constantly bombarding us with many opinions, suggestions. We are constantly being bombarded by advertisements, by what the, the, um, the social media wants us to um, believe in. There is so much noise that the antidote has to be, has to start with silence. Really that we consciously seek a time when our own mind can, can be disengaged from all these different dialogues, all of these different um, thoughts that is constantly bombarding and vying and, and getting our attention. Of course, the ability to retain silence is, is not something that is easy and because we are so accustomed to being not silent most of the time when, especially if we live alone, is that we, when we get home, when we get home from work, is we just turn on the television, turn on the radio or turn on some music, something just to break the silence. So that's why silence in meditation is such a breath of fresh air and it starts to give our mind a break and also to give our consciousness a break in order to um, wake up to itself. And silence is not, it's not easy. It's not something that we are accustomed to. So when we first start to meditate, silence may not be a very 
achievable goal. Therefore, I would actually suggest that is don't take your lack of silence as a failure. You may be able to, um, you may need to maybe be in meditation for a while before you even get a moment of silence. So don't take it as this lack of silence as being a, a failure and allow your ego to persuade you to, to think that you know meditation is not going to work for you. Instead, really to aim to let go of your internal dialogue. Aim to allow your internal dialogue to come and go without focusing or chasing after any particular thoughts. Because... Our mind perceives thoughts, and that is the nature of our mind. Our mind, um, somehow, when energy hits our mind, we, our mind would just naturally translate those energy, whether those energy is music or it could be um, someone talking or someone trying to have a conversation with you. So we, our mind perceive all these energy and then it would just translate them into thoughts. That is the nature of our mind. So work with the nature of your mind at first, especially, is don't require and don't think that you need to have silence right away is instead of silence is to at first simply observe your thoughts without any attachment, without trying to engage with any one thought. So for example, if a thought comes in to say, oh, I'm hungry, so what's for lunch or what's for dinner? If a thought like that comes in, is don't attach to it, meaning that you don't try to engage with it and say, well, you know, I feel like having salmon or I feel like having um, lamb ribs tonight. Um, don't try to engage. Don't, don't um, chase after it. Don't, don't go to the next conclusion. Don't answer it. If some a thought comes in is, you know, what's for dinner, then you just allow that thought to leave without trying to, to think of, you know, hmm, what do I feel like having? So that's what I mean by simply observe your thoughts without any attachment is to no, no reaction to it. Simply observe your thoughts allow it to come in and allow it to leave as well. Because if you don't um, attach any significance or if you have no reaction to the thoughts, then the thoughts will just come in and leave and it won't um, stay, it won't stick around and, and because there's no attachment to it. And after you have observed your own thoughts for some time, the next step is to start to balance your thoughts. What do I mean by that? Is that because your mind is simply a sponge for thoughts. Thoughts comes in all the time. And you have thoughts from the whole spectrum. And when you, when you observe that, the thoughts that comes in has a certain pattern. Certain pattern of thoughts more naturally evoke a, a reaction from you. For example, if you listen to some music, you would um, feel sad. Then, you, and then the sadness kind of grows more and more. Then you know that, and and if you 
if this happens to you more often than not, then you know that there is a certain pattern. So the next step in order to balance is that when you notice that you have a more affinity with sadness or some other negative thoughts, then make sure that you balance that negative thought with something that is positive. So if you have an, an affinity to sadness, then search in your own mind and look for things that brings you joy, that makes you laugh. So that is what I mean by balance, balancing your thoughts, because happiness and sadness are both equally possible. They, it's, there is no, um, the universe is, has all of these. Some people, however, likes to focus on certain things. And because their mind focus on certain things, they kind of draw attention, draw their own attention to those things. When you start to balance your own thoughts, you start to give yourself a signal to notice things that are at the other side of the spectrum. So when you do that, when you consciously do that, you start to create a balance within your own mind. So that's what I mean by balance your thoughts. So you can not really balance your thoughts, of course, before you have an opportunity to observe your own thought patterns and to observe a, a certain pattern. And once you have some idea what your patterns are, then you can start to balance that by giving more time and searching for thoughts that is going to balance and break up your own pattern, your own thought pattern. And when you start to do that, you would start to become more rounded. You would start to feel this polarity would start to become less and less. And so that um, you would free your mind from your own pattern so that you would become as equally drawn to sadness as it is to happiness, equally drawn to let's say, feeling of loneliness with feeling of connectedness. So this is the second step of balancing your mind because of the principle that everything is just as possible, that we are all things, not just some things, that we are unity, not just only certain things. So when you take the, the initiative to balance your own mind, then this discipline will start to round out and start to break up the existing internal patterns. And when you have more of this this um, balance, then it is also time to go to the next step. And what is the next step? The next step is to actually externalize this, this balance, is to also notice the balance in other people as well. So what do I mean by that is that you are actually trying to do the same process within yourself, but you're, you're just doing it with someone else. When you notice certain things in other, other people, let's say you, you, you notice someone that is 
for example, let's see, I notice that, um, oh, okay. Um, let's say, you know, someone who is always um, angry. Someone who seems to you to be always angry, then what you can do is to start to first of all let go of that let go of that judgment of that person and then start to notice when that person is actually not angry because um, more likely than not a person is not always angry there must be some time that they are not angry. There must be some time when they are actually able to enjoy themselves and enjoy interaction with other people. So that's one way of creating that balance externally is to, is to let go of your own judgment of certain people and to balance them out. And then also to go the one step further is if someone is really has more mm, affinity with getting angry, let's say their their first reaction is always angry, is that you need to mirror something different back to them. Because if someone is always angry, their interaction with you is always very... Um, direct and, and abrupt then and you because of because if that triggers you and you of course go on the in, go on the defensive then the dance will be like it will just escalate so when you when you encounter someone who is quick to react and and in an angry way then in order to balance that is that you start to understand where they come from. Why is it that they're always angry? And instead of, of allowing their reaction to trigger you to escalate that is to mirror the opposite. When someone is always reacting, then have a um, take the opposite direction is to consciously choose to make more allowance for that and to understand where they come from and to not add your own reaction to it to not escalate that because if you escalate it it's just going to go go to a shouting match and you have done that dance with that same person for probably more than once and it's not getting you anywhere so try a different approach mirror something different back towards them and to to assist them um not in a very overt way because nobody likes to be criticized that they are they are always angry, but in a very, I would say, gentle way is to allow them to to start to calm down. Maybe suggest that they can um, start to hold their breath or not talk to them for a minute or two. If somebody come come at you in a very aggressive way, is to not react right away, but allow yourself to just calm down, and before you talk to them in a more neutral conversation. I remember um, Sifu James shared with us um, recently that you know sometimes when her when when his um his wife asked him to do something like, for example, take out the garbage. And she expected him to do it right away. And, and, she, and he has something else that's on his mind and he's not ready to, 
um, take the garbage out right away. And he's also not um, up to arguing with his wife. Is that he actually, you know, what he did because he, of what he knows is to um, in, internally disable his own left brain because the left brain is more of the the egoic side of the brain is when he is able to disable that part of his brain, then even when his wife yell at him, scream at him, and really um, ask him to, you know, insist that he he takes out the garbage, that he that that escalation does not face him at all. He does not react from it, and he would just you know go about and 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 do something else and continue on with his train of thought and not be bothered by his wife. And so that usually is able to um, diffuse the situation. So, so usually what ended up is his wife would just yell a couple of times seeing that there's, he, he gave her no reaction. She would just, you know, take out the garbage herself rather than um, waiting for him to do it. So that really is the next step is to externalize to, so that um, you can actually be able to not just absorb other people's um, negativity, is to actually diffuse it with your own internal calm is to be able to understand that everyone around you is simply a reflection of you as well. It's another, it's an alternative part of you. So when you can hold the, the balance, when you don't go into polarity thinking, when you can hold that balance, then that balance will start to be mirrored. And invariably, your environment will start to have that same balance as well. And also because when you try to understand where someone else is coming from, you are disabling your own ego's um, you know, idea of jumping to conclusion is, is that you are actually really looking at things from all perspective. And when you start to do that, then it is very easy for you to let go of the polarity, let go of right and wrong and start to create and build up that discipline in your mind. And that really is what consciousness is about. And that is maybe for now, we won't be able to get to there right away. It takes some, um, it takes time to, to perfect the, the ability to be able to affect our environment because we've been so um, trained in being affected by our environment. We, and in order to turn that around is to create that peace and balance within ourselves and then project that peace and balance outside so that the peace and balance is able to be diffused and it's no longer in, um, in your reality. That takes some Um, that really takes that that takes practice, and that this is really what is about is 
connecting with ourselves, with our true self, and really knowing that we are all things. We have all thoughts within ourselves. It's not just thought of right or wrong. It's that both right and wrong is within ourselves. Both true and false is within ourselves. And when we consciously start to work on that, that mental discipline to get to the point where every time we um, sense that we are going into one part of the polarity, whether it is in the, the, the right or the wrong, the true or the false, the good or the bad, no matter which part of the polarity we are, we are in, is it we start to become more of a an immediate response is to look for the other, look for the balance, and this is this is really the mental training that is needed for ourselves to get to um, connecting with our true self, connecting with unity, connecting with all that we are, is it simply, and the last part that he says, is that this, this distortion is not necessary. I am not sure whether that is necessary right now. It is just that we are so used to doing that. We are so used to only thinking one-sidedly. It takes a lot of discipline to start to balance ourselves out. And in that way, I do believe that it is true that we are the one that is creating our own distortion. And also that this distortion is not necessary. Right now, it does not, it may not seem like it is something that is optional, that we, um, we are too lazy to, to want to look at the unity of everything that we are too accustomed to only looking at polarity. And hopefully now that we know what really involves in balancing ourselves and really letting go of our own um, attachment to certain thought pattern and when we can do that is that that's when we actually is able to truly understand what unity is about, truly understand what oneness is about and be able to look at all things and not um, jump to conclusion as to whether something is right or wrong true or false, good or bad, and be able to see something truly as what it is from all points of view, not just from our own point of view. And until we get to that point, the, the next thing that we can do is to really accept ourselves that we are simply a work in progress. Wherever we are at right now, in the, the, in the evolution of our own consciousness is that wherever we are at now, that is to have that acceptance to where we are at now. And knowing that at some point in the future, when we become more skilled at balancing ourselves, at being able to look at 
something, um, an event, an idea, a person from all different points of view and be able to let go of polarity. Until then, acceptance of where we are at and also acceptance of where someone else is at is important as well. And so that's all I would like to um, mention for this evening. <laughs>